On this week's show, we're going to be looking at how you can replicate your business. And we're going to be answering all your entrepreneurial questions. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Blueprint Podcast. We're here every Monday at 12 midday. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you can watch us on YouTube. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Entrepreneur's Blueprint Podcast. I'm here with my regular sidekick. <laughs> I, I knew you were into that. Hey, man, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How you doing? Yeah, not bad, man. Good, good. Oh, thank you, Robin. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been having a conversation, and like, I'm like, it's Ru- Russell Lee's podcast, but like, but you've been my guest every week. So I've far. been your guest. I need to week. start getting some other guests on there. I just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I just, I just, you're such a great guest. Oh, okay. You should well. be flattered. You're the star. I am really. flattered. I am flattered. You're, you're, you're the star, really, bro. You're the star. Right. Um, so, what have you been up to recently? Um, no, not really, not not much. Um, we've been on meltdown. The country's in meltdown at the minute, so it's it is crazy, crazy, isn't it? I mean, we're f- just so you know, I feel like I need to point this out because it changes so quickly. But today is what was it? Thursday today. Today is Thursday, the nineteenth of March. Thursday, nineteenth of March. So this show will be coming out on Monday, the twenty uh, third. Yeah, yeah. So it's four days' time, in which a lot of things might have happened. In, in them four days, we could be on the troops, military on the street. Yeah, um, we could all be in air raid shelters and bunkers. Who knows? Yeah, we've just been out for lunch in a cafe, but yeah. most of the other restaurants around there were closed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really it, it's beginning to feel like a movie. <laughs> yeah. Right now, do you know one of those like movies where everything starts getting. off normal <laughs> and then it's like, oh my goodness, there's this, there's this, yeah. Um, there's this crazy thing going on and then it's just building and building it. I never would have thought this was possible. Yeah. If you'd have said, you know, it's what are your threats to your business? <clears throat> you know you're doing opportunities, strengths, weaknesses, threats. I never wrote down <laughs> any threats, you know, a pandemic that's going to take over the entire world. Interesting, I was reading an article, um, if you believe this stuff, that is, I'm not, I'm not saying I believe it, I'm just telling you what some people believe. Um, it, is, it was a, an article about this one person saying that he actually believes the whole thing is made up. Right, because the whole thing is made up. Really? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how true it is. I don't believe that. But and he, he thinks it's all the, the, uh, the governments are just doing it. Uh, it's all to do with China because China has to do with the trade war against the US and all that sort of stuff. There are a lot of theories it's about so, it. There's so many conspiracy theories about everything. Um, and I just find it bizarre. But yeah. it is what it is. Look, at the end of the day, we are in a... It, it, it's a very uncertain time. It's very, very uncertain at the minute. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it possibly will be lead to a recession. So, well, well obviously, the, the, the market has taken a massive crash. It'll be very... I mean, it depends on your business. I mean, we've yeah. run, like, an events business. So, obviously, that's, that's been hit. Luckily for us, um, we've got a lot of uh, property. We've got a lot of passive income and things like that. We should bring yeah. money in. But... We are, who knows? It could be that tenants stop paying. At the moment, I haven't had any problems. Have you had any yeah, problems? No. But, but who knows? If everything goes on complete lockdown. So it is, it is a bit of a crazy time. But this week, we're going to be talking about um, how you need, to, when you start a business, how you need to have business that you can replicate. Now, this might not be um, <coughs> right. If you're watching this right now, you might be thinking, well, I just want a business that can make any money, you know. But if you're looking at growing your business, um, this is certainly one of the five key things that I look for whenever I'm investing in any business. So, um, what would you what would you say you, you meant by replicate? Um, you would say okay. <clears throat> you want to be able to grow it, okay? Yeah. So look, look at a franchise, a franchise model. Um, McDonald's, McDonald's prime example. That can be replicated anywhere in the world because it's done by systems. So. Um, if you go back, there's a, there's a film on Netflix called The Founder. Have you ever watched it? You actually asked me about this yeah. on, on a previous podcast. And you said, you need to go and watch it. And so I went home <coughs> and, and I watched um, Suits instead. But I will watch it at some point. You watched Suits instead. <laughs> go and watch The Founder. I'll, I'll that watch. talks to you about how to replicate a business. And it tells you about how you can quickly grow a business. Because originally, the, the whole burger chain, like they cook it on the griddle with lots of different chefs. But they need it into a system so that every every McDonald's is pretty much set out the same and it's set out in a, in a manner and um it's set out in a systemized like sort of chain flow, like a flow. So this happens there, then it goes there, then it goes there, then it goes there, then it goes there. And it's completely replicable and anybody can do it with minimal training. 
Um, and Ray Kroc, uh, the founder, um, he saw the industry, saw the, the burger chain industry, and he said, it, it, you're making this too difficult. And he, the reason McDonald's grew so quickly is because it was easily replicatable, mm. but the barrier to entry is quite high because of the cost. So you can replicate it if you've got the money to do so. Yeah. And it, it will make money. But it, it's a fascinating business model. It's yeah. really fascinating. And then it got taken over by, it was taken over by Ray Kroc. He wasn't the guy that started it, but he was the guy that was selling milkshake machines. It was the McDonald brothers that started it. Yeah. Were they Scottish? Mm, they must be somewhere. They've got heritage and they're Scottish. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just got a, uh, a high temperature. High temperature. Turn cough. He's not. I've just got a tickling cough. Um, cough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two metre distance. Um, um, yeah, no, no. So Ray Kroc was, um, he was selling, he, he was a salesman, he used to sell all sorts of rubbish, mm. right? And he was trying to flog his latest milkshake machine into McDonald's. And he's, he would be going into restaurants all over the country in America, and he went to this random McDonald's in the middle, in the doubt, the, 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 um, the deep sort of uh, west of the, the US, and, and he saw this chain where you don't even order, you, you literally go to a window, you order, and then you get delivered. Whereas previously, all the other restaurants were sit down restaurants. And he saw the systems, and it was just very easily replicable, but obviously, it's got a high barrier to entry, yeah. so it's protected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not anyone can just go and start that because it does cost a lot of money. Have you, have you set up any businesses that you would say were very easy to replicate? See, I always talk about my children's entertainment business because traditionally, <coughs> you might look at that and you might go, well, that is a business that you can't really replicate. So, you know, most children's entertainment companies, there'll be someone that ends up being a children's entertainment, they'll put together their own sort of yeah. thing and then you book that person. So you yeah. might have Alastair the Clown, <laughs> right? And Russell, and you, Russell the uh, the uh, magician, the, you're magnificent. Uh, uh, and then and then you book Russell the jester, and you book Alistair maybe. You book Alistair the clown. So it's like Alistair the clown. All the well, I'm just giving an example. It doesn't have to be Alistair. It could have been Alistair the. Uh, What's your point about? The, the the amazing juggler. Juggler. <laughs> All right, Alistair the clown. Alistair the amazing juggler. I mean juggler. 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 <laughs> juggler. Oh. Right, so so Alistair the Amazing Juggler yeah. would, would be on the website and it'd all be about you and Alistair yeah, yeah. the Amazing Juggler would turn up at the party and he would do the booking etc. and that's kind of how they all worked. Yes. And when I, obviously my dad was an entertainer and I sort of grew up into that but because he, well, we, he was slightly different, he had, there was three of us, yeah. Yeah. himself, his business partner and me, so we had to do it slightly different, there was the three of us on the website and stuff and I thought, hmm, like could you not then just have lots of other people? that were doing the same thing. So like, I put together like a specific show yeah. and I was like, and I, re- I basically <clears throat> replicated what I was doing there and then got other people going out and doing my show mm. and I'd give them half the money. Yeah. So instead, so that the, when I had two people, I was making just as much money off two people as I was but you I was doing. But you weren't doing anything. No, nah, you were running the business. You were, see, that's very clever because you were working on the business, not in the business. Yeah. This is the problem with a lot of small businesses. They start the business, but the business is them. Mm. My first business was a, a commercial vehicle workshop, and um, it was very much about me. Mm. Uh, and if I wasn't there, it didn't make any money. And it, if the job, and it, I, I made a lot of mistakes in that business, I'm very happy about that. Um, <clears throat> but if the job, what I, my opinion was, if the job had to be, if what needed to be done properly, I have to do it. So I struggled with letting go and things like that. Um, but it was very, very much about me. And, Which, ironically, you're actually pretty good at now. I'm very good at letting go things, yeah. yeah. Very good. You're very good at like, even, um, you can do anything now, which lets it all get there. You're very, you're very good at letting go now. Like when you do, obviously you've got speakers that you're training yeah, at the moment. Absolutely. And you're very good at letting them have a turn. You're What's not controlling it. Like you're not, I know when I first met you, you were very, very much like, it's got me, it's got me. Yeah. Whereas now, you, you, you're not like that at all anymore. No, I'm not, not at all. I, I really believe in letting people develop. And if you teach somebody to do something, let them do it. Yeah. And if, if and likewise with business, um, like Better Source is is uh, there's a management team, there's a management comp- uh, manage, manager in place. He runs that business. Mm. We have monthly, weekly meetings, and is it making as much money as if I was involved in it? Probably not, but it's still making good money, mm. and it means I'm not directly involved in the business, so I can then focus on the training business. I can yeah. focus on my property portfolio. I can focus on everything else. But the, the, um, if you're going to try and replicate it, you need to have a system. Yeah. Right, so the first thing I would I would recommend you doing if you've got a business and you think at the moment I'm doing absolutely everything and I want to be able to I want to be able to replicate that business is make a list of every single job 
that you do. Mm-hmm. So every single this is what I did. Every, every, what do I do? How do I do this? What do I yeah. do? Write it all down. Mm-hmm. And then describe, and you basically put it together a manual, basically, yeah. and describe how how you do that. Yeah. And then just train someone else to do the same. It, it's the same as systemization, isn't it? You, you're just you're getting rid of all the jobs that you don't want to do. Uh, or like the, the seven, eight pound, nine pound, ten pound an hour jobs. Yeah. Because really, if you're the owner of a business, you need to maximize your time. Um, and you need to make sure you, your time is focused on growing the business and not working the business. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand when you start a small business, sometimes you have to work the business. Yeah. But the, 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 there's got to come a point where you say, you take a step back and you say, look, let's focus on the business. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do, it's the thing is, though, sometimes you don't even know what you do. No. It's this you this do happened to me with, uh, and this is probably why a little bit for you were like, oh, I've got to do it, because you probably just naturally did the stuff that didn't exactly know what you were doing that was different. Mm. I had this. So the first thing I did was I got all the entertainers in. Yeah. Trained them up, spent time with them. Yeah. I then systemized the training. So I video, did videos, which I'd give them. You have yeah. to do a bit of training. Yeah. But then what you do, once you're the defense entertainers, it was like, these are my videos, do all the video courses, and then go out with another entertainer. Yeah, it's been some time. Yeah. So it took me out and trained, so I systemized that, so I could bring new people up about that. But when we had lots of pop, we had like 30 odd entertainers, but obviously we still had to answer the phone. Mm-hmm. Now, I used to do all the sales calls back yeah. in the day, along with my business partner, Craig. We used to all and we were both really, really good. And we used to get around about, and everyone that inquired, we'd be hitting a 38 to 42 percent of us would convert and call yeah, us. Well, when you consider there's like I don't know, like 10 companies that they call, yeah, we had a we were really really good. And then we hired salespeople in, and they <laughs> weren't, weren't yeah. as good. And it's about oh man, it's, oh, I might as well flipping do it. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to train them, and that's where I came up with uh, winner, winner sales, sales defense because yeah. it's like, what am I doing that they're not doing? Mm-hmm. Just getting all the sales, and that's yeah. where we scripted it, and we and we pro- and we went, went through to town. This is exactly how we do it, and you need you literally need to be that much detail. You need yeah. to break down every single step thing yeah. step by step. It's not just like here's the script, not yourself. The thing, right. is, the thing is, when it's your business, you just it just na- it's natural, isn't it? You're just like yeah, this is what you got to do, this is what you do, and you, just, you it's all very the phone calls are very natural. Mm. But when you bring somebody in, a complete just a, a generic salesperson, they're, they've got their ways, they've got their habits, but you want them to walk to your way. So the best way is the video. I completely agree with you. And script it, but not to a point of so that they have to go, like they flip through and go, when somebody says, oh, I don't want to book that, and they go, so hold on. Not like that. It's got to be natural. It's got to flow. Yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, I agree with you. Um, but it's a problem all small businesses have. It's, mm-hmm. They've got to take themselves out of the game. A yeah. little bit and, and then focus, look at it from above and see how can we make this so it actually goes into a, a sustainable business. Because if it's not, if you can't leave your business for three months, six months, or a year and then come back to a business that's still making money, then it's not business, mm. it's, it's just a job. You, you might be well paid, but it is a job. Yeah. Um, and we have this in the property industry as well. When I, when I ask people all the time about, like, do you think it's a business or a job? And, they all say that they think it's a business. I'm like, well, if you're not, if you can't walk away, it's not. Mm. It's a job. So, so how would you systemize, for example? You obviously you manage, you systemize your deal sourcing business mm-hmm. in terms of you know you. It's you probably, keep an eye. You know, it's probably ninety percent systemized, and I I I, uh, I keep an eye on it. But the only person I speak to in the deal sourcing business is my operations manager. Yeah. Like the, 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 we've got a lot of sources work for us. They don't even have my details. They know who I am, but they don't contact me. They, they, they wouldn't come directly to me because they have to go through my operations manager and I give him full power. And a lot of those people, people are people that have been on your deal sourcing training. Yeah. That have then gone, oh, can I come and work with this? So you've, you've got a system which you teach. Yeah. And then they've gone through that and gone, actually, can I? Can I? So I, in this is, uh, yesterday I had a, a guy come up to me and he said, look, I want to, I want to come on board your business. I want to call deal source. I want to you help. I want you to help me with the, with the, with the systems and everything. And I'm like, great, we've done the training. And he said, no. And I said, well, the first thing you've got to do is go do the training. I said, I'm not, I won't work with anybody unless they've done the training. And then, so he's got to do that. Then he wants to do, um, spend some one-on-one time with me. Um, but he's like, I'll just pay you. How much do you want? And I'm like, you've got to do the training first. I don't care if you pay me a couple of grand, five grand, whatever. I don't care about that. What I want to do is go and do the deal sell masterclass first, which is a three-day program. Then we'll talk. And if even, if, even then, it's still not a case of um, come on board. Um, 
because I want him to be completely, he doesn't, he can't come to me. He has to work through Max. Mm. And it's because Max runs my business. But not all businesses you can wreck again. So if you, start, right. if you start, so for example, like if you, if, I mean, or it's tough, it's tough, can be tough. Right, right. Give, me, give, me, give me an example. Which one? Okay, well, if you're a business coach. Yeah. Now you can replicate it. Action coaches, for example, of is it action coaches? Um, I think it is. Mm-hmm. They've kind of replicated in terms of they've got train, but then you send you you, you really weaken. Well, you, could, you you could, like for instance, um, you, you know you could, but because they would have their methods of teaching, and then you just you're just teaching their methods of teaching. Yeah. But you never you won't be able to replicate that person. Like Russell Weeds is only one Russell Weeds, thank God. <laughs> there's only one Russell Leeds. Yeah, there's only one. So if you said, "Oh, I'm going to do the Russell Leeds coaching program," yeah, and it's going to be held by Russell Leeds, it's not replicable. You can systemize it, but then it can't be the Russell Leeds coaching program. Um, but give me a give me a real like a, a, a an everyday business. It's not coaching. It's not replicable. Um, I would say something that is you can't charge much for. So like, for example, let's say. It's a difficult one when you start thinking about it. Because when you think about it, most businesses are replicable. Most businesses are when you think about it. What would it do to replicate them? What would it do? Like Mobile Gardener? Could you replicate that? Well, yeah, because it's about... Uh, yeah, you could not really, because it's about him, but you could bring people in to do the job. You could bring people in to do the job, but I think there's only so so yeah. much you could replicate that. Because if, you, if you're bringing them in to do the job and they're cutting the person's grass every week, Mm. Aren't they going to be thinking, hmm, just do it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's anything that you can just do, you, anything you just think, mm, I'm just that myself. This is why McDonald's is so good, because it, it, you could replicate it very easily, but it costs a lot of money. So yeah. it's replicate, it, you can replicate it, but the barrier, the barrier to entry is oh. here. So um, I used to have a franchise uh, with a company called Snap On Tools. They got Thousands of franchises all over the world. When they came up with the name Snap On, yeah. what were they thinking? Do you know what it was? Well, no, there's a reason for it. Okay, so this is the reason. Um, if, you, if you know tools, do you know tools? Uh, okay, okay, do you know what a ratchet is? A ratchet is one of these things going, yeah, yeah. And then do you know what the socket is? It goes on the end. Yeah. So you would have a ratchet and you put a socket on the end, okay? No, yes, yeah. they snapped it on. Yes, okay, so previously to Snap On, Snap On were the, the creator of that. Previously, all ratchets, so if you wanted a 13 mil ratchet, it, it. It, would be a bit of, no, it would be a bit of metal with a 13 mil box on the end. Snap-on made it so the sockets were interchangeable. So the, the ratchet was just one, you'd have one ratchet, and then you have a, a, a row of sockets. Right. And then if you wanted a 15 mil, you get a 15 mil socket, and then you snap it on, and then you pull it off. Mm. And then you've got a 12 mil, you snap it on, that's the snap-on. Okay. And I tell you what, mate, it's it's a very very successful business. It, I'm sure it is. But every time true. you say it, I, I mishear you slightly. Yeah, I know you do. Yes. yes. I wonder why. It's your <laughs> dirty mind. Uh, anyway, Snap On, um, great franchise, very reputable, but high barrier to entry. Um, it costs about hundred thousand pounds to get into that business. Now, I one of my I I left that business in two thousand and fifteen, and one of my colleagues that was in the business as well. He left to buy a McDonald's franchise. Mm. Um, and the basically the for him to get into McDonald's he needed about a quarter of a million pound. Um, so he, and he bought a he's got a McDonald's restaurant in Leicester. Um, and it's just about quarter. How about million. how about like uh, if you're a singer? If you're a, yeah, you can. If you're a band, that's very good. Can't have to get that. Bands oh. can't have to get that. Comedians, anything that anything that's you, you can't have to pay. Yeah. The, the, the solar risk is reliant on you. Like like one man band plumbers and things like that. And you'd struggle to do. Because um, then you have to bring teams in. Yes, you can train them up, but it becomes very much about. That's, that's a really bad example because you can bring people in to train them up. With plumbers? Yeah, plumbers. You can. Plumbers, but plumbers. But I do think it is, They'll never do the same job as you. But the thing it's is, even with like plumbers, they're not, they're, they're not many big. Pl- I mean, you can't be wrong. Pimlico plumbers, biggest plumber. Oh, we had this conversation before. We said the same thing. You mentioned it then, Pimlico. Well, mate, they're huge. Pimlico, Pimlico, Pimlico. Plumbers in um, this conversation. London. You struggled to say it. Oh, I did. Let <laughs> um, me. I need to put on. You talk. I'm when you say they're big, though, are they just based in London, dude? In Pimlico. Hold on. Then you'll be shocked. I'm going to find some figures. You talk. I'm going to find some figures about oh. this, and you'll be shocked. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, something. Charlie Madden or something. I can't remember. 
Because there was a guy called um, Joseph Valentine, I think his name was. Okay. He was on The Apprentice with Alan Sugar. And he won The Apprentice, and his business was a plumbing business, obviously, where you brought Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, and rep- but I think he's left that now. Oh, let me. Yeah. Uh, let me um... You don't know to find their figures. You want to bet? You want to bet? You talk. You want to bet? Well, give me a minute. Don't just keep telling me to talk when, like, then you're just sitting there, like, scrolling through. Dude, I'll, I'll give you the figures, and this, I'll show you this. This comedy's right before. Charlie Mullins, his name is, um, and he was he was a he started the plumbing business in the seventies, and he's 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 uh, replicated and, and made it really successful. And um, he plays his his plumbers on the underground media, like honestly, they're on mm-hmm. big 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 bucks, um, and he's completely systemized the business. Uh, let me see if I can find him. Okay, Pimlico Plumber, Plumbers. Come on, Plumbers. <laughs> right, okay, hold on. I've got it here, I've got it here. Right so for a plumbing company, mm-hmm. you'll be shocked at this, believe me. Do you want me to, uh, do you want me to act shocked when, 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 when you... Let me uh, find it. I'm just going to go, oh, let me practice my okay. shot. Okay. okay, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, I'm so, shot. go on. How much do you think we turned over last year? Um, 200 mil. No. Come on, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me guess again, let me guess again. How many plumbers do they have? No, they, they, they've systemized, like you systemized your, they're all self-employed. Oh, okay. All right, so the way you've done it is genius. They're all self-employed, if they don't want to get paid, they don't also get holiday pay. Mm. But they're, they're, the Turnover, five mil then. The gross so profit, the gross that. profit, Go on. last year was 17 million. Not bad, eh? It's not bad, it's not bad. Um, and he, but he did, he's very vocal in the, because do you know self-employed people want rights about like holiday and all that sort of stuff? Like the Uber drivers. And all yeah, yeah, well he's very vocal in the fact that they shouldn't be getting that because they earn 100k a year. His plumbers, his electric, all these people that work for him, they all earn very, very good money. He's got electricians? Everything. He's he complete household stuff around London. But they're called Pimlico. It's because they're Pimlico plumbers. plumbers. They started as plumbers, mm. but now they're, they're electricians. But he's completely scaled the business. Mm. It, so so if, you want to scale, if you want to scale your business, um, top He's a very good entrepreneur, very good entrepreneur. Well, well, obviously, he's making 17 million profit, he's doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you just need to make a list of everything that you do. Mm. Now, the thing is that it's quite time consuming. Yeah, but you do it once, don't you? It, it's like anything, if you set the business up right to begin with, it, yes, it takes time, but you're not going to set a business up today and make profit tomorrow. So set a business up, do it right. Do it right. To begin you with, you're going to be doing everything. Of course you are, yeah. I, but I actually believe you should do everything fast anyway, mm. until so you know what was really involved in it. And as you're doing it, take notes, write down, write down notes on like, exactly how you've done things. <laughs> yeah. Also, in the minute you understand them more, so like, often when I'm talking to the sales guys, in our team, it's like, dude, like they, they know yeah. that I have done their exact yes. job. Yeah, yeah. I, I do love it when um, when you can say to yourself, look, I don't ask you to do anything that I won't do or I can't do. Yeah. So I, and, and it's the point where you, you say to them, look, everything in this business, I can do or I've done. Yeah. I'm not saying I've done it the best, you might do it better than me. I'm not saying belittling your staff, but. Certainly the finance guys did better than me. Yeah, of course, yeah, absolutely. But we, we, can, we can still do it, not to mm. the same level as them. But like, let's take um, in my old bus and coach workshop, everything that my mechanics were doing, I've done or I could do easily. Mm. Okay, so one that I don't, I didn't want them to ever think that the because this is well, this is also what happens with small businesses is employees come along and they get this mindset that well, the business would sink if it wasn't for me. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like this place. The business wouldn't even exist if I wasn't here. They get this, this really high opinion of yourself, of themselves, and that's why I, I think as well that when you employ people, nobody should be um, irreplaceable. Do you know what I mean? Everyone should be replaceable. In if, fact, if they, not only you, you, you should be replaceable. Of course, you should always be looking to take yourself out of the business and replace you with something else. Mm. Um, always and and um, particularly Part of replicating it. Yeah, it? but particularly like staff and things like that. I used to have mechanics, right? they, 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 they used to think that, that if they weren't there, the business would, would not survive. And I'm like, okay, then leave. See ya. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, do you know what I mean? Just, uh, and I'm not saying staff will throw away at all, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, um, everyone in the business is replaceable. Um, because but you, you want everyone to feel valued. Of course, to feel. I'm not saying not to feel valued, I'm just saying... You wouldn't want a business that is so dependent on one person. No. Nah. Because then it's not a business. I agree. 
it's it, you, you're t- it's like lean into a pizza, pull a brick out, the whole thing comes down. Um, if one person could cause a disruption of a business, it's not business, in my opinion. Um, my opinion's not always right. I feel like many don't agree, so that's fine. like fine, whatever. But yeah, but maybe you agree with it, maybe you don't. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Is your business replicatable? Do you have any questions for us about how you could replicate it? How you can take it to the next level? Or do you just think Alistair's full of rubbish? Whatever you think, comment below. It is now so home for this. Okay, so this is now time for... Ooh, I don't know what I've just kicked there. I have Sam back. Uh, this is now time for the Q&A part of the show where you ask us questions and we answer them. Now, if you want to ask questions for a future show, check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is at Russell Leeds and just drop me a question. Probably best to... Because I get so many messages, it's difficult to go through them all. But mm-hmm. if you just comment on one of the one of the videos and say, hey, I've got a question for you next podcast, then I'll look through and I'll try and answer it as best as I can. Okay, so I've got a question for you here. Go on. Okay, this comes through your Instagram, uh, private message. Um, okay, right. this is from <laughs> Pav. Okay. And the question was, why did you leave the children's entertainment business and get involved in training? What was the main reason? Okay, that is a good question. Well, getting, um, so I've been, obviously I've been doing the Children's Time Company for quite a while, and yeah. I had another entertainment company as well. So I, I spent a little, quite a lot of time doing it, and I felt like I took it quite a long way. We were the biggest in the UK, and I was very interested in getting more involved with property. And then Simon messaged me and said, "Hey, do you want to uh, do this?" I had, I had a look at the business model. I had a look at the property investment opportunities and stuff that we'd have, along with the training. And I just thought it'd be exciting. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd probably make more money. It'd be fun, different. So, main, mainly for the excitement. Uh, I, I always thought you'd done it for the, like, the new, a, a new challenge. Yeah, yeah a new challenge, don't it? Um, really. I've been doing, I've been doing <coughs> entertainment like, for like 12 years. I just kind of thought this would be, I just thought it'd be fun. Mm. I, was, I think the main reason was I thought it'd be fun. Okay. It's just a good opportunity. Thank you. Cool. Um, I've got a question that comes through. This was it come through on the property as a property for the property investors podcast question, but it's more business related. Okay, and it was to do with okay. Let me just read the question. Out. Um, so this is a guy from a guy called Andy B. I don't know who that is. Um, and Andy B. Andy B. A N D Y dot B B E E. Oh, that's a strange surname. Andy B. Okay. Uh, so the question is, with regards to coronavirus and the impact it's going to have on businesses. Do you think, because we're going to be getting a lot of people say they can't pay for things, do you think businesses are going to cope or do you think they're going to fall? Well, through coronavirus? All the coronavirus, the ongoing impact on coronavirus no. with regards to people, being like, for instance, in the property sector, we're going to see people not, possibly not be able to pay the rent. Service accommodation is, mm. is down massively because people Both. are not going to hold it. But what about everyday business? So for instance, um, I know the government have just, just announced this 300, is it 330 billion. Something like that. So it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, a lot of money as a relief to businesses. So how do you think that's going to, do you think that's going to save jobs? Do you think that's not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I th- oh, okay. So I think that, listen, businesses have already gone bust. Yeah, of course. So they. fly B went bust. They went bust before coronavirus. No, they didn't. They went bust like a month ago. Yeah, but when oh, coronavirus, before. okay, fine. Before coronavirus really hit us. We're really, because that, they were already, I think any business that's teetering on the edge. Yeah. Then this is going to be terrible for them, isn't of it? Of course, it is, right. Yeah. So obviously the government are coming with the scheme and giving the loans. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to actually play out. Yeah. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. If you can give, a, they can give a couple of um, months turnover, but to companies, I think that'd be great. I think that would certainly save a lot of companies. Of course, yeah. I think it also depends very much on the company. So a lot of like one of the advantages of my entertainment business was the overheads were very, very low mm-hmm. because we paid the entertainers when they did the work. Yeah, they weren't working, yeah. So if we did a month or two with no, with no <coughs> income, yeah, obviously that's a pain in the ass, yeah. but our office was 750 pound a month. Yeah. We only had five staff in the office. Yeah. So the PAYE, for take out hours out, but the, for the staff would have been about 10 grand. You're probably yeah. talking 15 grand a month, something like that. And then, and then you kind of, Breaking you kind of break it even, yeah. yeah. So, so what, what can businesses do in this time to protect themselves? Because obviously a lot of businesses are reining things in. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think we can do as businesses to protect yeah, themselves? Yeah, well, we're in this situation. So the, the very first thing that we're doing, that we're looking to do right now, 
is to cut any unnecessary costs, mm -hmm. right? Anything that, that's not, and uh, anything that's your, your sort of, oh, any overheads, yep. right? Because we're, we're canceling a lot of our events, so we're going to be saving a lot of money there in mm -hmm. terms of venue hires and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but even then, like, the, the coronavirus has struck, like, we're canceling events, but a lot of these event places, well, a lot of these hotels and that, they're like, well, yeah, that's fine, but you're contracted to still pay. But to be fair, we haven't had anyone say that. Really? Everyone's really? let us postpone. Oh, okay. Yeah. And not invoices, okay. Well, they, they've let us postpone the event to a later date, yeah. Okay. Some, some of them have already paid some of the money there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that doesn't really affect our cash flow because that's money that's already gone. It's already gone, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Not For me, the most important thing is the, is the, is the staff payroll. 100%. You know, we've got like 30 members of staff that we need to make sure we pay. Look at it. Look at it. We've got some money. Yeah. In the, so we're, you know, we, we can make sure that's my top priority. 100%. And then um, on top of that, you've got things like your office space. You know, obviously you need somewhere to work from. Although, do you? Maybe you don't. <laughs> you know, everyone's, well, everyone's working from home. Yeah. Man. So uh, the, the thing is with this whole working from home, uh, they're not going to be as productive. As productive? Yeah, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's not, the, the staff are not going to be as productive because although they're working from home, they, they won't be doing anywhere near what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, it's... It's, it's making do, isn't it? It's making do with what you've got. There's probably no any other work to do either because everything's shut down. We've got no events yeah, to run. We've got no, you know, probably our busiest team will be our you know, power obviously is filming this, our media team because we continue to put the content out. Yeah. So they, their job's pretty much the same. But some of, some of the other jobs, you're right, it's going to be, it's going to be scaled back. And it, listen, it, I think the answer to your question it very much depends on how long this goes on for, which at the moment we don't know. Yeah. Now, I'm judging the China situation, I'm thinking China got the virus in January. It's now middle of March and then 90% back to normal. Yeah. So if we're back to normal by May, mm -hmm. that would be fun. I think I think most companies could survive them, especially was, the government um, lines. Yeah. I but, was so gone. But they're talking about it going on for it depends on how we deal with it. I mean it could last who knows? Yeah. I was speaking to one of my um my solicitor, he's obviously he's got other people that are in the event industry, and they're they're planning on making no money for the rest of the year, okay. and they're budgeting based on that. So that to me seems a bit extreme. Mm -hmm. But my um, I was speaking to a guy yesterday, a contact of mine. He runs a waste management company, and he's literally had um, some of his biggest contracts pulled on him in the last like in the last week. He's had three massive contracts. He's like fighting fire at the minute, mm -hmm. and he is. Fighting fire, and I'm I'm talking to him, and he messaged me all day, and he's in that partner meetings, he's in that meetings with, inve with investors, in that in that meetings with big big companies, and he does like multi million pound waste management contracts, um, and it's like re instantly it's having an effect on his business, mm. um, and yeah, and the other thing is is think about the, how can the business do different things? So we know that we can't do events to make money. So we're switching to webinars mm -hmm. and to online courses, and we check. You know, you need to adapt. That's the thing. You need to. You need to be thinking. Okay, how what? How can we continue to do what we do? Continue to make money. How can we use technology? Let's say you're a. Uh, I was speaking to someone at my kid's school who's they're panicking. They're a business coach. They're like, no, what to do face to face meetings? I'm like, just do it over Zoom. Yeah. You know, it's like, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket yeah. scientist to work that out that you could just do. If you've got existing clients already. But, but then again, people don't want to spend money now either. But for me, I'm thinking now's a great time to, to spend money. Invest, yeah. Because like, if we're, like, we're, we're negotiating a deal, we didn't see it today, didn't we? Yeah. We're, we're getting here, we're much. negotiating a deal. Suddenly they're like, oh, yeah, we'll accept whatever. Well, it's desperate to get it moving, right? Yeah. 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 So if you do have deals that you've got to do, you know, if you, but, but don't, what well, one thing, I'd say do the deal, but you want to, you want to stay liquid as well. Don't, yeah. don't use all your cash to buy stuff at the minute. Yeah. Just in case we don't know what's going on. So like even like uh, people keep asking me if we should if they should be pulling out property deals and things like that. But the thing is the um, deal that we the deal that we were doing today, we won't have to put any money down until July. Yeah. Right. So we can negotiate it now, but we, but I, I mean I hope by July it's all sorted. Uh -huh. I think it will. I think it will be as well. I think this will blow over as quick as it came. Um, Couple I'm of probably wrong. Couple of months. Maybe I'm wrong. Couple of months. That's our prediction. That's our prediction oh, no. <laughs> on, on the 19th of the, the 19th of March. So if you're watching this after the 19th of March, it may have changed. <laughs> then, uh, then, yeah, who knows? 19th, actually, 19th of March at 14.53 in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So that's, that's what we've seen now. <laughs> yeah, by the end of the day, it literally is that, though. It literally is every single day. And then who knows? I mean, Boris will be giving a speech, won't he, in about two hours' time. So when we see that, who knows? It might be very, very different. Yeah. But we'll see. Oh. Guys, thank you ever so much for tuning in this week. Please do not forget to subscribe so you never miss any of the episodes with myself and the wonderful Alistair Eckering. We'll be back next week at 12 o'clock, so please do tune in. We're here every single Monday. And remember, you can watch it, the video. You can watch us on YouTube, or you can listen in on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Guys, thanks ever so much. We will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.